Oh yes, here we go. Welcome to Toyota Bassmaster Studios. Tommy Sanders and Mark Zona here. Bass Fest is what we're looking at. A different animal for sure, as just indicated there. Feels like it's been going on forever. Ever. It's a different deal. It definitely is. I mean, it's almost like it's kind of a, a never-ending all-star game of bass fishing right now. And the other side of that is our venue, Kentucky Lake, Paris, Tennessee. Here's the best way to describe it, folks. It, a four-pound bass is about that big. In this tournament right now, a four-pound bass pretty much means nothing. You need them really five pounds and bigger. Absolutely. That's what we've seen over the course of four days of fishing so far. Let's recap it. I'll take a look right now. Well, you want to talk about Kentucky Lake? You cannot do it without talking about this guy, the champion two times out of the four times the Bassmaster Elite Series has been here, and Kevin Van Dam. Great start on day one in fourth place with 23 pounds plus. Well, and the last time we were here, Edwin Evers would take second place to Van Dam, but starting off Bass Fest right, 24 pounds even. Coming off a strong finish at Lake Havasu, our last Elite Series event. Andy Montgomery, been a little quiet during the course of this season, but an explosion on day number one. Plus 25 pounds for the man from South Carolina. And his roommate from Tennessee, Ott Defoe. Well, Tommy Sanders, an enormous day one stringer. 26-7, Ott Defoe throws down on day number one. Zippo Bassmaster Bass Fest presented by Airy Truck Cabs right now belongs to Ott Defoe. What an impressive first shot for his Bass Fest effort here at Kentucky Lake. And Ott Defoe day one had no trouble finding numbers of fish. Definitely did it, but on day number two is kind of when he ran into issues. and. You're seeing some solid fish right here, but three pound bass on Kentucky Lake are kind of mean nothing. And Akifo said, there's no doubt in my mind they are leaving me and I have to leave my primary areas. And he was slowly starting to put it together late on day number two. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, this is a big one. This has to be a big one. Coming all the way to the back. Yes. Yes. That's not bad for finding a place during the tournament. Vermont Defoe over to the man who had a solid start, fourth place start on day number one, kept it going on day number two. Evan Van Dam, we've watched him work out this way on Kentucky Lake so many times. Van Dam said this was one of the toughest Kentucky Lake <laughs> events he's ever fished, but that being there said, a lot of the cameraman that were in his boat said flurries like they have never seen before. Another angler that did the exact same thing, well, it was Edwin Evers rising to the top of day two weigh-in. Watch this, looking for 23, 15, 27 pounds, two ounces. At the halfway point of this tournament, Edwin Evers has his eye on the Century Club with 51 pounds, two ounces. So, two days of fishing in the books on Kentucky Lake, and with that, we take our 124 angler field down to 50. You see who's on top, Edwin Evers, Van Dam, super consistent, even upping the ante on day number two. Andy Montgomery, Ott Depot taking a bit of a hit on day number two, falling down a little bit, but that's not it. Not done for qualifying for the final two days on Kentucky Lake yet. The second chance event, that's what day three is all about at the Zippo Bassmaster Bass Fest. We take everyone who didn't make the cut, we give them one more shot at 10 spots in the last two days. Exactly right, Tommy, and what, as you say, it, like in a NASCAR race, in qualifying, it's almost like if you don't make the weekend round, it's like you could drive your way back in. Exactly right, and Randy Howell starting off the day very big on Barkley. Here we go. Oh, this might be a good one. I just like a pretty good size head. Come on, baby. The rain's turning back on. I hope. He got a big head. I don't know how. Nice. Yeah, I might cover that one. No three pounder, I think. Randy Howell would go on to take first place in the second chance day of fishing on Lake Barkley. Randy Howell, always competitive. It was so fun to actually catch him because I was kind of down after missing the cut. And that's the cool thing about this Bass Fest, being able to have a second chance like that. So that's what was really cool. And But 18 pounds over here is good, but over in Kentucky, 18 is not even 
gotten you to even put the mic in my face, so I'm glad I, I'm glad I, it worked here today anyway. Randy Howell leading the way. Ten anglers who were actually able to go to Lake Barkley after the fireworks and fish their way back in to the full field. They are the subject of our Zippo Outdoor Second Chance Spotlight. And if we take this look at the ten who are there, I mean, we look at their overall finish. Randy Howell went on to have a great finish. Well, why don't, why don't I just spotlight Kevin Short, Chad Pipkins, and Paul Mueller what? all you want to spotlight them? <laughs> Sorry, below 100th place, and they make it back to Kentucky Lake. All right, that's three days down, but there's two days left. The third day on Kentucky Lake. Of course, that field now of 60 fishing there in Kevin Van Dam. That's good effort right there. Been super consistent, though not as well as the first two days. And, and really, on, on day three on Kentucky Lake was There's the demise one. of Van Dam, is what he said. He said, you cannot catch under 20 pounds of bass. Granted, there, he was in the 19-pound range, but he never got those giant quality five pound bites that he caught on days one and two. All of the anglers talking about having to adapt to to water that was just flat, calm, not moving, a different set of circumstances on that day as we watch Brett Height. And really, if you listen to Brett Height, Van Dam, and a lot of the leaders, they'll tell you there are no secrets on Kentucky Lake. Brett Height was fishing around giant crowds all week long, throwing a weighted wacky worm. Yeah. And as exact words, Brett Woo! Height stomped on the competition around him. Derek Rimmett's back in the thick of things right here. It's been a while since we've seen Derek Rimmett's right at the top there, but what a great week he's having. Exactly right, Derek Rimmett's right there. one of the few anglers that does not have company around him. That one will help a little bit. Whew. 22 pounds, seven ounces, and Derek Remitz, who started the day in a third place, moves up a spot currently in second place with 69 pounds, 11 ounces. Derek Remitz fishing himself into a strong second place as we head into the final day of competition. But the number one man, as it was on day number two, strong round, not as much as day three, but Edwin Ebers on top. That's a good one. Stay on her, baby. Stay on that, girl. Man, my heart's pounding. Get in here, get in here, get in here, get in here, girl. Oh. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Check her out. Look right there. That's a baby. It's a five pounder. 21 pounds, a two ounces. With 72 pounds, a four ounces. Edwin Evers moves into the lead. Once again, left the dock this morning with the lead. I've been here before, you know, you don't ever want to lose the lead, but you know, it's fishing. Anything can happen here, you know. It's, I've been doing this, I don't know, 15, 16 years now. So uh, I've been on both sides of it. You know, it, it's a good thing to be in the lead. You want to be in the lead anytime you can. The Zippo Bass Fest on Kentucky Lake, presented by ARE Truck Cats, is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Berkeley. Evan Williams Bourbon. And by GoPro. The Bassmaster Elite Series mid-season showstopper, the Zippo Bassmaster Bass Fest, presented by ARE Truck Caps. It's taken four days of fishing to arrive at this final field of 12 who qualified for the final day. Edwin Evers in charge. Eric Grimmett's right behind about two and a half pounds. But on this day, everyone gets exposed. No more secrets. Everyone is going to let it all out for this final day and a shot at glory. Well, one more day. We'll see what happens. Man, this is so awesome. Day four, Bass Fest, here we are. This is what it's all about, guys. This is what we fish for. This is what we live for. This is it right here, guys. This is Bass Fest. This is a Kentucky Lake Ledge Fishing 101. It's what it's all about. It's every textbook you've ever read about what's what we're gonna go to do today. We're gonna throw deep crankbaits, we're gonna throw swim baits, we're gonna throw you know a big stand-up worm, big spoon. And gizzard shad that get up shallow. I'm gonna work the, the shallow end of the ditch and then I'm gonna start working deeper as the day progresses. Current, none of that's a factor for me, so uh, I'm gonna go out here and, and see what we can do. Man, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be a great day. I, 
I'm fishing on the final day and uh, just a blessing to be doing something I love to do. We got a beautiful sunrise right here. We got fans everywhere. It's just crazy all the boats out here. It's gonna be a fun day, guys. Let's go get it done. Eight hours of fishing on famed Kentucky Lake, huge Kentucky Lake, 175 miles. It takes a lot to unlock this one. Let's do it. Yamaha unlocked the lake. Only one angler really heading north. Derek Remis, see Fred Rambanis right by our takeoff. Fred Height down near the power line area, but down near New Johnsonville, you see Brandon Lester and Edwin Evers. Edwin Evers said, I had backed off of my schools every day because I didn't want other competition. I didn't want local anglers to find me. Well, on this final day, Edwin Evers can absolutely unload on them. Oh, that's a nice one. Stay on it, bro. Oh, she got a big old black spot on her head. <laughs> I should have taken that light out. She's all tattooed up. Come here, girl. Man, she's barely hooked. Oh, stay on there. God. Dude. Thank you. My rod hit your camera. I know. And it came off. I know. I'll uh, I'll go to the front of the boat next time. Ooh, we got her. Mm. Man, I'm like, <laughs> I got her pinned against the boat just at a nick of time, didn't I? <laughs> Golly. I got her in. It don't matter. It's all good. You know <laughs> well, what I mean? I know, but... I would have felt really bad. It's all right. We're good. I guess all's well that ends well, huh? Mm, kind of a potential disaster avoided early in the morning on this final day of competition. <laughs> From Edwin Ewer is going to jump back up the lake to Fred Rambanis. And Fred Rambanis, one of the only anglers that is not fishing the main river ledge. Pretty much everyone in the top 12 except Rambanis concentrating on a little creek ledge doing something totally different. This is awesome when they hit this thing. I've probably fished it a lot different than most guys. I want to have my rod down at all times. I want to be able to set the hook when I feel something different. You feel the spoon so much when you're fishing it that if you're uh, constantly jerking it up, you miss opportunities. And so I'm constantly keeping contact with the bait and it'll work, it'll tire you out real quick get them fired up a little bit, and then I'll pick up my big swim baits. Got one. Big fish. Big fish. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Stay down, stay down, stay down. There's another one with it. Okay. That's, that's on the smaller side of the fish I've been catching, but it'll work. Uh, that my, start filming this live a little bit. I just had another one follow it in, so I gotta get back out there. You go big or go home at Kentucky Lake, guys. It's <laughs> like a hubcap. He's throwing the hood of a car right there. <laughs> I wonder what happened to my old shoe horn. Now, Brett Height. Maybe the most consistent guy of our top five here. Look at this 23 5, 23 6, 22 even. Red Height's got a plan that's working, obviously. I got one. That's a big one.
could start, those are the ones I want, nice fat ones. Boy, you can watch that guy fish all day long and learn a ton about deep water ledge fishing on Kentucky Lake. Brett Hyde with one of those of good size to get started on a good limit on this final day. 12 oh anglers goodness. we're down to here after four days of fishing on Kentucky Lake in yeah. Bass Fest. Again, one man will be standing. We're a long way from there yet. Paris, Tennessee, that's our host city for the Zippo Bassmaster Bass Fest. Presented by ARE Truck Caps, Paris, Tennessee, one of the main portals to probably one of the top five bass fishing lakes in all the world. And a lot of the landmarks around here paying homage to the other Paris, which we understand is on the other side of another big pond. Back out to the action and Tennessee angler, Brandon Lester. Brandon Lester, you can tell how much pressure is on this lake. You saw Brett Height throwing a weighted, wacky rig out on the ledges. Now, Brandon Lester throwing a drop shot for these pressured bass. Before yesterday, I didn't even have a spinning rod rigged up all really? week. And yesterday I thought, well, it's the weekend, I better. And they bit it. Might be a good one there. Feels pretty heavy. Got him hooked on the top of the head, it looks like. All right. That's better. Three and a half pounder. Uh, three and a quarter. Brandon Lester started the day in third place, dropped to fourth. That one puts him right back on the status quo as we take a look at Brett Height. And I'll talk all week long, Mark Zona, is that it's still Kentucky Lake, but it's tougher. It's just a little bit tougher. Why is it? Well, there's been so many tournaments here the last few weeks, and the other side of it is there has not been a lot of current later in this event. There was earlier, and as that current has slowed down, that's when the finesse has picked up. There's a big one. Five pounder. <sighs> That's what we're after right there. <clears throat> and with that, Brett Height knows if he can keep the pace he's on right now, he's on track for 100 pounds and maybe the victory over to Rumbanis. Rumbanis is off of the main river ledge, as we said earlier, and he has not seen another competitor all week long, which you never hear on Kentucky Lake intercepting individual giants as they make their way out to the river channel. Oh my goodness! Cool, oh, the thing is... Smoked it, it's a big one. Oh. Stay down, stay down, stay down. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's the right one right there. That is the right one. That's the right one right there. Oh yeah. Stay down there, stay down there. 
Fotografisch. There's more where that came from. This thing had a belly on it. Oops. How much you can do when that happens. That's a bass. Chunker. That's the last one. Right there. Alright. Look at the stomach on that thing. Oh, I think I might have found some fish. Let's see what's going on. You know you are on a hammer hole lake when an angler says, nice little mm -hmm. chunker and it's a four pounder. <laughs> Fred Ruban is one in the box and one still swimming in the lake. Will that play into the final outcome? Fred Brumbanis as we move up the lake to Derek Rimmitz. Derek Rimmitz, who started out great this season, but had a terrible trip out west trying to make amends for that today. You know, you just gotta, gotta go with what got me here, you know? I mean, this is, it's been pretty good the last three days. There's no reason it shouldn't be good today. It's just, just gotta get our timing down, that's all. Dead tail sticking in his mouth there. That's what they're eating, big old gizzards. Derek Remmett started this day two and a half pounds behind our leader Edwin Evers. A little bit slower start on this fourth day on Kentucky Lake for Derek Remmett as we take off and head to Edwin Evers uh, trying to figure out what he's up to today. Edwin Evers said one of the biggest keys on Kentucky Lake during this event was getting behind his steering wheel and finding isolated schools that have not been found yet. Edwin Evers, every day of this tournament, has had to relocate these giant largemouth. Electronics are your lifeblood ledge fishing. It's everything. I mean, you look here, I got thousands of waypoints just, you know, right here idling over, marking each individual fish and uh, marking stumps and laydowns and rocks. It's, a, it's really, really, really important living behind the steering wheel of his boat all tournament long. And the other side of it is, these fish were very shallow that Edwin was on early in the week, and he said there was not another competitor near him. Back when the current was moving, the fish were up in five feet of water, and as the tournament has gone on, they have definitely gone deeper, and Evers has followed them. That could be a big one. Man, he hit it hard. This will help. That one helps, maybe. Golly, they get small when they get to the boat. They're so white. Oh, it's been cold before, too. Edwin Evers looking Thank pretty you. solid on this final day, trying to wrap up win number nine. But plenty of time left to fish on Kentucky Lake. And you know this field is not just going to clear a path for him. we got more to come. The Zippo Bass Fest on Kentucky Lake, presented by ARE Truck Cats, is brought to you by Humminbird. Mercury. 
Min Coda. And by Nitro. As for the catch of the week, well, hashtag big catch contest. That's how you make the catch of the week happen. That's certainly advice that Clint Basket from Idaho took. Just to be laying a big one on us right there. Home run. I'm telling you right now as we get back out to Edwin Evers, our leader on Kentucky Lake and not all alone. There he is. Love boats like that out on the weekend. Exactly. Oh. Right. Edwin Evers said really one of the biggest things in this tournament has been boat position because these fish would get off of primary areas and really Edwin would hit the whole radius. Throwing a couple different things, throwing a crankbait and a swim bait and a hair jig. We're gonna see if we can find a school right down through here and get them fired up. I started a little short of where they normally are. Uh, just trying to work my way up to them. I'm seeing a few fish down through here. No groups, but uh, we're getting real close to where they're at. No, I need a big one. And that one feels good. Oh, yes. It's a good one. think she wanted that thing, do you? Oh, it's in her crushers. Yeah, I got her. Edwin Evers. Now there's way too many hours left of fishing in this final day of Bass Fest. And of course, this is Kentucky Lake, so it's too early to say he's destined to bulldoze the rest of the field. But Mark Zona, as far as adapting to what's happening day to day and and getting dialed in on baits, he's looking pretty good right now. Key word right there is baits, and that's gonna be the Skeeter Taste the Baits this week. Really Edwin Evers' whole story on Kentucky Lake, adjusting his arsenal, adjusting all his baits to the current. Let's start right here, throwing a mega bass spark shad early in the week. Look at the teeth marks on that from day number one. And here's what was amazing. He was throwing that on a bladed jig in three to eight feet of water because there was crazy heavy current on days one and two. But as that current slowed down, that's when Edwin went to, well, your deep diving crankbait, your big worm. When that current slowed down, those fish that were shallow, they all funneled deep. And when the current completely slowed, that's when the Tennessee River homemade hair jig played a major factor. Now, Tommy, I'm not gonna lie, Edwin accidentally forgot to send us his hollow body swim bait that was a major player throughout the week. But the one thing is, I'm gonna tell you something, it was his rotation of baits as the current slowed down through the event. Oh, that could be a big one. Oh, baby. Come on, be a big one. Oh, it's a nice one. recipe every day he's led this tournament he has had a big one in the mix over to Brett Hyde who's got a great great start to the day but he's got to pick up the pace just a matter of time get the old da dunk da dunk there he is yep oh yeah this is a good one. I'm pulling them very hard. Big one. Come on, Buck. Oh my gosh. Come here. Seven inch cut tail yammy. Those are the ones we're after right there. That is a freaking giant. 
That is a giant. He goes on the big side. Brett Height been throwing a big weighted wacky worm all week. And a lot of people say, well, oh, no, no, I throw a weighted wacky worm all the time. I got well, not out in 20 to 30 feet of water on the Tennessee River, Brett Height has been doing something totally different from the rest of his competition. Back down to the New Johnsonville area with Brandon Lester had that huge third day of competition looking for that giant school that he was on. <clears throat> Be her there. No, oh, Bessie. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Yeah. Come up here. Come up here. Come up here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Good one right there for Brandon Lester and mm. Tommy Sanders. It appears. That fish had been gnawing on that worm for a while. It's a good, committed largemouth right there. And let's waste no time putting him into the live well. The angler from Tennessee, plenty of experience on the Tennessee River, made the classic his first year last year out here with the Bassmaster Elite Series. He's in some tough company on this yeah. final day. We will run him down and show you where they are oh, and what they're doing bit. when we come back. It just felt good, you know? Kentucky Lake on the Tennessee River. This is the Zippo Bassmaster Bass Fest presented by ARE Truck Caps, our big mid-season bash here on this uh, one of the most famous lakes in all of bass fishing. And Edwin Evers, one of the most famous bass fishermen out there today with a good commanding lead right now. Not insurmountable though. Brett Height can run him down, but it's gonna take some pretty big time heroics on his part. We're gonna get out with Brett Height right now. And these guys are fishing very, very specific spots where little creek channels meet that river where that current hits the hardest, that has been the key. So this kind of, you know, again, textbook, Tennessee River ledge fishing. You got a little tiny drain here, a um, little ditch that comes out and meets the main channel here. And these fish are just stacked up on the down current point side. Um, you know, oh, I got one. Come to daddy. Swimming right towards me. Come here. I'm gonna back off that drag. Let him fight a little bit. Don't jump, don't jump, don't jump. Don't jump, don't jump. Open your big mouth. Yes! <laughs> That's what we're talking about, baby. Mm. Red Height knows the formula. He's just got to step it up that much more. Edwin Evers definitely on a tear today as we get out to Derek Remitz. And Remitz said one of the biggest keys on Kentucky Lake, do not spread yourself out. Find a bunch of little areas in one region of Kentucky Lake. Got all the confidence in the world in this stuff up here, but it's dwindling fast right now. I mean, I'm really, Two hours, you can't really just go look around. You can't go fish the bank. I mean, not a lot of options. That's the problem. About the only option you really got is fish in front of the boat ramp because they've been let go there for four days now. I don't really want to do that. That's what I love and hate about this. When it goes great, you don't have to worry about it. When you get a day like today, Derek Rimmitz, who won his first outing with the Bassmaster Elite Series, ledge fishing on Lake Amistad down in Texas, trying to uh, get something going here. Kind of a paradox what he said. I have all the confidence in the world in this place, but it's dwindling fast. And he's learned a ton on the Tennessee River with living on Lake Gunnersville. And he said, what I, what I was getting at is find little areas in one general zone so you're not running all over Kentucky Lake. Another angler doing the same thing down near New Johnsonville. Edwin Evers maximizing a certain region of the lake. And somebody, well, Tommy Sanders, somebody told Edwin he would win this week. I'll tell you something really, really neat. 
and I hadn't won this tournament yet. But my son told me, Dad, you're gonna win this week. <laughs> and it gave me goosebumps when he said it, because I mean, he was convicted in his heart that I was gonna win. I mean, he just knew without a shadow of a doubt I was gonna win, and, and what stinks about it, he always thinks he's right. And so he'll say, I told you, Dad, I was right. It was no big deal. I mean, he'll act like it's nothing. Oh, that could be a big one. Oh, baby. Come on, be a big one. Oh, it's a nice one. Not as big as I was hoping. Dang it. That God, I thought it was bigger than that. It just felt good, you know? Oh, I'm going to tell you something. He has good on him with that hair jig today. <laughs> Absolutely. Edwin Evers and the big, big bass, that's been a theme for him this week. His recipe, catch a solid limit and anchor it with a giant bass. Every day he's led, he's done it. Eight pounds on day two. Day three, he jumps back with one better part of seven pounds. With Edwin Evers, can he catch one more in the final hours of this tournament? Another big one to seal the deal? What, what? Oh my goodness, boys, look at that one! Woo Oh, golly! The Zippo Bass Fest on Kentucky Lake, presented by ARE Truck Cast, is brought to you by Skeeter Boats, Trike Boats, Yamaha, and by Toyota. Paris, Tennessee, Kentucky Lake, Zippo Bassmaster Bass Fest presented by ARE Truck Caps. Four days of fishing in the books already. This is the fifth and final day on legendary Kentucky Lake. Twelve anglers left in the mix at this point in the proceedings. And Fred Rubanis started this day in fourth place. He slipped a bit, had his huge day on day number three, gained the top five with 26 pounds and 15 ounces. Hasn't been going like that today. Yesterday I caught them all over real deep water, and every time I come up shallow is when I catch these fish. I'm wondering if they all moved up on top on me, and I just missed the boat today on it. But they're not very big. They're not the same fish. I mean, I think the big ones, I they worked their way on out. They had to have. They're out on the ledges. Got them. Oh, it's a big one. Yes, yes, yes. Stay down, stay down. It's coming around this way. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh. Look at that last minute, last minute fish right there. He ate it too. Red Room Banis. Currently, we got him unofficially in fifth place and not much time left to improve his status on this fifth, you might say, and final day. Let's get to it. How about our Evan Williams bourbon shot of the day? Shot of the day of the week yes. is going to be here on Championship Sunday. Out of nowhere, Edwin Evers probably not wanting to see this. Kevin Van Dam has made an enormous run on the leaderboard starting the day in sixth place. Everybody kind of counted Van Dam out. Well, late in the day, he said there was a lot of wind-generated current out here. He said he didn't have a lot of current rolling on Saturday, and really, there wasn't a lot of wind. He said when that wind picked up on Championship Sunday, Van Dam knocked their lights out. Yeah, the third day of fishing on Kentucky Lake, just 19 pounds and 12 ounces for Van Dam. It's roaring back, trying to catch Edwin Evers. But look at that, almost to the century mark. Exactly right. And Edwin Evers here in 2010 had a phenomenal tournament. Really up till the last two hours of fishing, Tommy Sanders, we thought Edwin Evers was your champion of that event. Edwin Evers, a valiant effort on that final day. Did what he could to hold off Kevin Van Dam. But it was all said and done, despite catching fish like that during the course of that final day. It came down to the weigh-in when the 2010 champion would in fact be Kevin Van Dam. Anytime you have an opportunity to win on a body of water, you want to come back and show everybody that you can, you know, and 
Yeah, it'd feel really good because it hurt really bad to lose that tournament with the bites I had, you know. It was a really hard one to swallow. I got fish all over right here. I sure feel a lot better if I catch like a six or a seven. That's the tournament right there. I got my button pushed. I got a mule, or she's got me, one of the two. Oh, baby doll, I need you. Oh my goodness, boys, look at that one! Woo oh, golly! Thanks, guys. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That was a uh, game changer right there, boys and girls. How do I feel so much better? It has been a grind today. I am sorry, Tommy Sanders. That right there is one of the best catches of the season. Every day he's led this tournament. He's had one like that in the mix. That's all he was waiting for on this final day. You heard him say it. That's the tournament. And this bunch has been waiting for it. He's the winningest pro in the history of the sport. From Kalamazoo, Michigan, Kevin Van Dam. 26 pounds at 10 ounces. Him with 94 pounds, four ounces. Say hello to your brand new leader, KVD. I'm real proud of the record that I've had uh, here on the lake. I think this is my sixth tournament uh, at Kentucky Lake. The worst I've finished till till this one is third. So hopefully I don't uh, I don't do any worse than that. And I'd love to win. You know, you never know what these guys caught behind me. But there's some great anglers, and and I had quite a deficit to make up. Our next angler started off the season last year with an Elite Series win all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. Let me hear it for Brett Height. He's looking for 25 pounds, 10 ounces to take the lead away from Kevin Van Dam. 22 pounds, 14 ounces. Not going to take the title away from KVD, but moves into second place. Let's roll through our final angler. Has led this event for the last two days. From Talala, Oklahoma, E squared, Edward Evers. Boom shakalaka, ch -ch 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 giant bass. Oh boy. That is a difference maker. Kevin, come on, side by side, guys. Looking for 22-1. 25 pounds even. E squared has done it. A nine-time Bassmaster winner. Edwin Evers, your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Edwin Evers, a super elite coming into this thing, Mark Zona. Now at nine wins and beating the toughest field of the year to win this Bass Fest victory here. He's gone up to another level. He's a special guy. He's an interesting guy oh, to cover yeah. in the Bass Master Elite Series. And here's the best way to describe it. He is a monster to cover in a tournament because he doesn't want to give his game plan away. He keeps his cards very close to his vest. After the tournament's done, he'll give you everything. But his intensity is something that... In all honesty, he's at another level with intensity during a tournament. And the other side of it is, this is what we've waited for with Edwin Evers. We've said for years, he's going to win classics, AOYs. It's not happened yet. Maybe this is the start of a run. AOY, Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. And the only reason Edwin Evers is not up there because he was top three last tournament then is because he had a terrible first tournament. But look at the five out of the top six right there. 
all Western anglers with Dean Rojas leading the way. And I'm going to tell you something. You better watch out for Aaron Martins again, where we're headed in a couple months. Yeah, we are headed to the St. Lawrence River. Been there before one time, Waddington, New York. Bountiful place, but uh, not, not an automatic place. Can I throw you some fantasy picks? Please. Why don't we look at Aaron Martins quietly Keep watching Bren Ayler, and you know what? Let's just throw a KVD because there's a smallmouth swim in there. Absolutely. We'll see you then. Waddington, New York, and the St. Lawrence River.